Hello, and welcome to the Wacom Mangan Anime Days 2021. Thank you again for joining us for the second session on day two of our three-day online event dedicated to all things manga and anime and a whole lot more. My name is Jeroen and I am very happy to be your moderator today. We are thrilled to have you here again um, because when we started the Japan Online Week exactly one year ago, we could not have imagined that this would turn into such a nice and lively community. Um, and we're really, really happy and grateful for this. Uh, this event is brought to you in collaboration with our partners, Pixiv and Clip Studio Paint. And this session with Shiruko is all about cross play. Before we jump into the talk, let me share some of the basic housekeeping rules with you. Our session will last approximately one hour with a dedicated Q&A session at the end. We will be keeping an eye on the chat, so feel free to send your questions anytime you wish. With so many people in the room, we probably won't be able to answer all the questions, but we will do our best. We are all here to learn from each other, so please be kind of each other and do not spam the chat. We see you socializing and sharing your accounts, um, and we're all for it. That's why we keep the YouTube live stream running for a full 10 hours a day. This will give you a lot of time to connect and socialize with each other. But during the sessions, we kindly ask you to keep the chat clean for sessions, re session related questions and commentary during the presentation. As you know, this talk is being recorded and will be shared on Wacom YouTube channel next week. Now, let me continue with a brief introduction of who we are and let's see if I can bring this across better than the first time this morning. So Wacom has been around for some 40 odd years and we are pioneers of digital pen input technology. Whenever you want to create on your computer and you realize that using a mouse or a trackpad just doesn't cut it, you should try using a digital pen. But we would not be here without our partners Pixel from Clip Studio Paint. And those of you who have been following our online sessions in the past few months, you probably noticed our growing partnership with them. Pixiv is a social network platform for artists that focuses on communication through artworks. It was launched in September 2007 and specializes in artwork publication and communication based on the concept of make creativity more enjoyable. They have now over 50 million users and going strong. You can visit and join the amazing community of Pixiv at pixiv.net forward slash en. Clip Studio Paint is a versatile graphic software best suited for drawing and painting to create a wide range of content. With a wealth of unique features, it helps to create anything from illustration over comics to concept arts and even animation. No matter if professional or hobbyist, Clip Studio Paint's natural drawing feel is loved by artists around the world. One more thing before we start, <clears throat> and this is about advertising. If you are based in the EU or UK, we have an amazing offer for you all. Please visit our Wacom eStore and see the discount code um, MANGA20 for a discount of up to 20% on a wide range of Wacom products, including the Wacom One, Wacom Cintiq displays, and Intuos and Intuos Pro tablets. For those of you who are outside of Europe, please check your local Wacom eStore or dealers for ongoing promotion. All right, time to start. As I said, today we have Shiroko with us. She's a cosplayer and singer since 2006, um, has been a guest at over 300 events in over 14 countries. She's been traveling a lot and seen a lot, and she's a lot of experience to share with you. She's been the runner-up of European Cosplay Gathering 2018, runner-up World Cosplay Summit 2016, and she's retouching her own cosplay photo shoots since the beginning of the pandemic. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Shiroko to the session. Here you go. Hi everyone, my name is Shiroko. And yeah, I'm a cosplayer singer from Germany. And today I feel so honored to be part of the Waker Manga and Enemy Days. And yeah, I've been cosplaying like over 16 years and recently I started to also do home photo shootings and use my living room to build up settings, to do photo shootings, also self-timer photo shootings or I just let my friends to do pictures of myself. So today I'm going to talk about this and 
I really, really hope you will learn something about doing photo shootings at home. So even during the pandemic, you are able to continue with doing cosplay and having fun. <laughs> So uh, I'm giving you guys a small overview about what I'm going to talk about today. And yeah, so at first I'm going to talk about uh, some examples, how I started to do uh, photo setups, photo backgrounds, how to set everything up, and uh, also some possibilities to do it in a more simpler way, because I know that some of my settings can be kind of intimidating. They are just like super crowded with stuff and look like super complicated. They are not. And you can do amazing backgrounds with just a few things. The next point I'm going to talk about is what do you actually need? Like, is there some equipment I can recommend to you? And I will also give you, because cosplayers are always broke, <laughs> some easier possibilities or cheaper possibilities to get them. And I will also talk about this. And I will go with you through two settings for planning phase, step by step. One is for planning phase, and the second is how you're going to build up the settings at all. So you kind of get a feeling. And at the end of this, I'm going to switch and do some live editing of the last setup I'm going to talk about. And we'll also talk about what points I'm trying to, uh, what I'm trying to do to get the feeling of a picture I want to achieve. And at the end, you have some possibilities to ask some questions. Of course, feel free to ask questions in between. And um, yeah, Waker is so nice to collect all the questions. And yeah, so let's get started. And the first point is examples. Yeah, so actually, this was one of my very, very first uh, photo shootings at the start of the pandemic. Um, I started doing pictures two years ago. So <laughs> basically, I kind of learned everything by myself. Of course, you find tons of videos and panels about doing photography, but I didn't find like a lot of panels about doing your own home studio. And this is actually why I'm trying to show people how you can change your living room. Like right now here, I'm uh, sitting in my living room into the photo shooting space. And I got like so many questions, like how do you actually start this? And my very first setup was just, a fabric, like, like a white fabric just taped with duct tape into the bookshelf. Um, this was my old flat, so in case you don't recognize it, it's not the same room. And I just put like a white fabric there and used some organza fabric I had at home. Because I'm a cosplayer, I have tons of fabric. Yeah, I really have tons of fabric. And I just put my camera on a camera stand and try to make some pictures. Uh, yeah, uh, I used this penguin to get up my light setting because I really love to work with flashes. You don't need flashes. I'm going to talk about this a bit later. Um, I use a Canon and um, Canon has something very unique, but I think also Nikon and Sony have this. You can connect actually your camera to your phone, which is pretty cool because you don't need a remote shutter. You can just like hold your phone in your hand and see actually the mirror or what your camera actually sees, which is pretty cool because then you now have to frame everything. And also if you have like corrections like ISO or shutter speed, you can also use the application to change the setups. And also you are able to focus. I don't know if this is the case also for other applications, but I can tell you that Canon is supporting this and it's like super, super, super helpful. But at the beginning, I'm always recommending people to do pictures like from everything, like uh, the most the biggest frame you can get and later cut it down in Photoshop. Uh, you will get a feeling how to frame things later and then you can go without quality loss. Yeah, this is like how I was sitting there and <laughs> flying to the camera. I was uh, pretty tired, but I think that's fine. <laughs> and um, this is actually the result. Um, so you can see that this is like a really simple setup. 
and you can do something um, like this out of that. Even if it's just in your home with just a white fabric, uh, one recommendation, please iron it. It's, <laughs> if you have to iron it in Photoshop later, it's, no, just don't do it, just don't do it. Don't, don't be me, don't be me. <laughs> Try to iron everything beforehand. So yeah, this was my very first photo shooting in my um, living room. And there are also other possibilities, like this one is kind of level up. Uh, I have like back fabric in the background and flashes from behind and the front. So you can do a lot at home just with white fabric or with black fabric in the background. Here I also have some um, fog machine. If you use fog machine at home, please look if you have some fire alarm or something like this. If not, could be, it could be interesting. <laughs> But um, this is like, this isn't done in um, my living room, but in similar circumstances. So you don't always need like a lot to do your home studio. Um, this is also one of my very first video and photo shootings at home. Here I only use natural light. I just used the windows, like the setting wise in front of the opposite of the window and also from the window of the site. So I got enough light and I just have this paravent. And if you have like something like this, for example, the, um, the shelf I have here, I bought this shelf because I thought it looked like kind of Japanese and you can use it for photo shootings. Yes, that was the reason I got this shelf. You can use it as well. So you don't always need to buy something or to get something or to put something up. It depends on what you have at home. Of course, with this setup, you can't do like uh, full body photo shootings. That's actually a bit difficult, but like portrait, it's totally fine. And in this case, I also had, um, this was by the way, a cover photo shooting. And I just had my camera on the camera stand and just use the phone self timer to record it be, or to take the picture. And that's the result. Yeah, like this. Here in this case, um, I use white balance to get the bluish color into it. Um, this is more like about photography stuff um, and something I don't want to talk about because there are plenty of videos you can find. Uh, but there are possibilities to set up your lighting like white balance or color uh, correction on the cam itself so you don't have to do it later on Photoshop. But of course you can also do it on Photoshop if you want to. Uh, this is actually the kitchen of my best friend and the photo shading setting is super, super small. It was just like two to one meter. So you don't need that much space. I know that especially people living in the towns, like in Germany at least, you don't have that much place to build up your settings. And um, here I just have something uh, black fabric and also some nice... I think it was a curtain. Yeah, I think it was a curtain, um, a curtain fabric to give everything some kind of yeah, wet, reddish parts. So it's not just too boring. And what I learned during the last photo shootings is that it is better to have built up your setting in a corner. Why in a corner? Because if you just have like a setting in the front, you can just take pictures like from above and like from the front, but you can't like really change perspectives. So if you have a photo set up in the corner, it's actually nicer to be able to change the perspective because the settings are really small. The pictures tend to look similar very fast if you don't change perspective. And uh, this is why I always recommend to go with the corner. It has a lot, it really has a lot. Yeah, and this is actually the, yeah, the picture I took in the setting. And these are some more examples. Uh, you don't need to get like decoration. You don't need to buy it. You can ask friends, like for example, the pinkish cushions are from my best friend. She loves pink. She has everything in pink. And so I was asking, can you give me some of your cushions for my setup? And she was like, yeah, sure, why not? And um, maybe, you know, I love penguins. 
and I did a penguin photo shooting and yes, this is actually IKEA bedding I used as fabric. I won't recommend it because everyone is like, oh, this is IKEA. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it's IKEA, sorry. <laughs> but you see, you can use like very simple things to uh, do your photo settings at home. Uh, something I also learned about photo settings is that it kind of looks flat really easily if you just have a background. So what I try to do is to give some dimension to the setting itself. And this is why I like to put some flowers in the front or to have some cushions in the front or in the back. So you have some kind of depth. They like dimension. It's not just like you're standing in front of a brick wall and doing some pictures, but to give you picture like some feel that you are in a room and not just in front of a wall. This is also an advice I can give you guys. Yeah, this is one of the settings. I just wanted to show you guys that the settings are really, really small, like we want to two meters uh, as her kitchen is not that huge. But um, there are a lot of possibilities, even if the space is very small. And at the end, I'm going to talk about a setting. This is about one to one meter fifty, so even smaller. But you can already do a lot of beautiful pictures in it. So sometimes you have to like kind of arrange your living room because they are not there's not that much space, but I think like one to two meter a small corner, everyone can do it somehow in their living room. And uh, here I have something um, different as a background, and this is why I also chose this uh, picture. It is photography background. So it's not just fabric, but printed fabric. Uh, please iron it as well. <laughs> we did it like ironing. <laughs> it has a lot later. And this is also possible, and there are many, many different types. I'm also going to talk about this uh, later, like I'm um, doing a point what you actually need for further shootings at home. And yeah, this was also really nice to use because we have a lot of girlish cosplays. So we decided to go for something like flower wall um, type of a background, but they were also different like brick walls or uh, like like these um, very majestic, uh, like, like if you are in a castle background. So there are a lot of different types. And I will also talk about uh, what you should avoid because there were some types of photo background you shouldn't use because they're a bit problematic. This is our uh, picture I took in this setting. She was lying down there in the small crony you can see there. <laughs> Yeah, we are already at our next point um, about what you need for photo shootings at home for the setups. So the first thing is, of course, a camera. That will, uh, would be always nice. I have my camera here. Um, it's uh, not the most expensive ones. I know cosplayers who do our uh, pictures also with their phone because they are on budget which is which is fine you don't need to start with like thousand euros of equipment i mean of course the quality there is a difference but even phone cameras can do amazing pictures nowadays so you are not like really stuck into it okay so for the first one or two settings maybe you can just ask a friend hey can i change uh, i want to do some photo shootings hey can i can i get camera or would you help me this is, of course, the first point. And um, like for the background, maybe you have already seen it, but I have kind of background stand. Um, there are different qualities. <laughs> Mine was very cheap. They start like with 30 euro, but they can get better. Uh, the thing is like, if you use it in the living room, try to get something very light because uh, you have to put it away and put it there. If you have a space to install something um, better, Go for it, that's amazing. You have your own furnishing space in your room then. And um, there was also the possibility to get some with black or white fabric. Um, normally I will recommend to get your own fabric because you can buy more fabric and build up the setting in the corner. 
um, these are mostly just like for frontal pictures or pictures from above only. So uh, yeah, uh, it's up to you how you want to start. In, now I'm going to talk about uh, the background um, pictures. Just let me drink something first. Stay hydrated. <laughs> uh, these two backgrounds, are, in my opinion, very problematic. And can you kind of guess why? Because there's a light source in um, the picture. And I mean, if you are good at photography and if you are used to imitate light sources to add them later into a background, that might work for you. But if you don't imitate the light, like the sun at the very beautiful beach from behind, it looks super Photoshop, it looks super fake. So if you are going to start with doing um, backgrounds or photo settings at home, try to go for something neutral like flowers, brick walls, or uh, wooden tiles. Just don't use pictures like this. Because uh, even you have to look like, okay, how is light, but also how is the color grading. And um, this is really, really, really difficult if you are starting out. Of course, if you are really like, ah, but I know how to do it, then just go for it. I mean, everyone wants to be at the beach, especially right now where you're not able to travel. Now we are talking about the light equipment. So of course you can go with natural light, like you have a window here and you just build up the setting on the opposite side of the window. But of course, if you want to do photo shooting with flashes, or if you want to take pictures in the night time, or it's just to, you're struggling with um, natural light, I would always recommend you to go with speed lights. So why speed lights? I mean, you have amazing studio lights and things like this, but why speed lights? There's one reason, sometimes between the wall and my model, there's so much space. <laughs> there's not, no more space to put anything behind her because my living room is not that huge. Some other people's living room might be even smaller. So a speed light is just like this and you can just put it behind your model or just use a very small stand. That's fine, that works. But if you go with a really huge uh, studio light, there's just no space. And because you are using um, just a very small space, and uh, I always like to use a uh, wide angle lens, like 35 millimeters, because there is just no space. <laughs> That's actually always the reason about that. You don't need that much power. So a speed light is actually perfect. Uh, I also like to use um, a softbox, um, like you can see right here and the color gels. If you don't have the money or the space for softbox, because these softboxes can be also really huge and they take up a lot of space, you can also go for umbrellas, but just mind that umbrellas are spreading the light more than soft boxes. So if you like to do girlish photo shootings like me, like Nico from Love Live, Idols or 15 year old girls, you should be fine with umbrellas. And um, I don't use any um, soft boxes or umbrellas for like um, lights from behind. This works totally fine with just the speed light and color gels. For beginners, I always recommend to use either a window or to use permanent light. So permanent light, if you buy permanent light, go for 5,500 Kelvin. Why 5,500 Kelvin? Because this is neutral light. This is like white light. There is some bluish light and some yellowish light and you just want the neutral one because then you can change it in your camera in the white balance or just use color gels. In the reason I'm always recommending our beginners to go with permanent light is, you can see on the camera what picture you will get later on. This is different when you are using speed lights because when you flash, it's just in the moment when the picture is going to be taken. And this means like you kind of don't know how the picture will turn out. 
But if you use permanent light, you can just like, ah, oh, no, I want a bit more like here, or there's shadow in her face like there. No, I don't like that. So I'm just going to change it. So this is my advice for you guys regarding lightning. Of course, you need a camera stand and also a stand for you. Light equipment, um, you can go with something very cheap at first. And for example, also for your phone, like these um, clamps for your phone, if you're starting out with a phone. And if you don't have um, this application or a camera who can be connected to the application, there's also the possibility to get a remote shutter. There are different types and it really depends what you want to do. There are amazing and cheap ones for phones, for example. So just check out whatever they have and yeah, choose one of your desire. And of course, decoration. Yeah, decoration. Actually, I was surprised how much stuff I have at home I can use for photo shootings. So you don't always have to go to buy something. Like, of course, it's always nice to have some basic things like fabrics, uh, like um, flowers. Oh, I bought so many flowers in the last two years. But normally you have so much things and decorations in your home or you can ask friends. I have amazing friends, they have amazing uh, apartments and I just go like, thank you for all the decoration I can use. So there are many, many, many possibilities and uh, you don't always need to buy something. And my friend also likes to go to flea market with me. And go, oh, this looks nice, so an exciting, oh yeah. And you just take it. So yeah, it can be, kind of expensive but you can kind of keep it on budget if you want to so now we are going to the planning phase oh gosh i'm talking so much just let me drink something <laughs> uh this is an example how i like to uh plan my photo shoot settings um this is not in my living room, it's in a uh, photo studio space, but because we had to pack and bring everything by ourselves and build it up, I um, still can use it as an example for planning photo shoots. So uh, the first thing I like to do is to get to know, okay, how much space do I actually have? And then I'm thinking about, okay, what setting I want to get. For example, I was like, okay, I'll have something like Japanese style costumes. So this is why I'm going for kimono things, kimono fabrics, or eventual or a power wind in the back. So it looks kind of Japanese. And the first thing I'm doing is like doing a scribble about what I want to build up. The first thing is that you actually know what you pack, which is really helpful because sometimes um, I put my setting in front of the door and in this room behind the setting are all my things. And I'm sometimes like, oh no, I have to get my stuff. So uh, it's really helpful to know what to bring the day before and to get everything so you don't have to run around and search for everything doing the building up because sometimes there are also people who try to change and it's getting a bit faster and easier. And the next thing is that you can kind of check, okay, um, this looks pretty nice, but there is like something missing like in front or something missing in this corner. Maybe do I have something which I can put there? You kind of get a feeling for the setting itself. And it also helps if you want to do pictures with friends, like, hey, uh, this is the setting. Do you have a cost that you want to take pictures on there? And it really helps to imagine how the setting will look like. And also when you build up things, like for example, in the scroll, I can see, okay, there's a power wind behind the shelf. So the first thing I'm going to build up is the power wind. It happened to me, not only once, <laughs> that I realized, oh no, I should have put the umbrella behind the shelf first. And it helps in general with a planning phase and everything. But I can tell you that, I mean, in this case, it's surprisingly similar to the end result. 
I, I, I was surprised by myself, but it will never be like your plan in school is. <laughs> if it's not the same, just don't mind. It's, it's something like this, so yeah. And uh, down there is one of the results of the picture. So you can see that actually the settings, they look nice, but like not really appealing. And sometimes you have a feeling that the setting is just super crushed and uh, put with too many things. Like it's just too crowded, the stuff. You will see it actually in the next setting. But when you take the picture, it's like, no, it looks actually really nice. So don't be blinded. If you take a picture and find kind of the best angle of it, the setting can be really amazing, even if it's very simple and looks quite plain. So now I'm going to, oh yeah, next picture is the result of also the same setting. One of my favorite pictures. <laughs> And yeah, this is uh, in this room. This is why I have the panel right now in this room. Um, how I build it up my last setting here. So you can see that there's actually the bookshelf behind me. And I have my steering machine on um, the table. So uh, I kind of decided to put Paravind in front of the table and the steering machine. And I uh, attached a lot of OVs. I have so many of it as a Kimono. So I just took them there and just take them onto the shelf. Um, there are also possibilities to use clamps. Uh, it's not very professional to tape it, but it works. And we cosplayers love tape. <laughs> I used a background system in this case, not for the back of um, the photo setting, but for the front. And the reason is, as I mentioned before, I wanted to get some dimension. And uh, I really like it if you can like take pictures from above and there's something in the front. And um, if you use like about 1.8 F, it looks like super soft and nice. So I can always recommend to do something like this for girlish and cute pictures. Um, also here, I built it up in a corner. It's sadly not on the opposite side of the window, but I used flashes, so it was fine in this case. Yeah, some more decorations and dragonza. And now I'm pulling up the flowers like this. So you can kind of have things in the upper part, but you can take pictures in between and also put some decorations on the floor. It's really small. You can, I think you can kind of see how small it actually is. Yeah, this is uh, the setting line of decorations. And we've also, I put a table in the front also to get some dimension. And you can, maybe, maybe you have realized that the, um, the seat you see there is just like this from the power event. So if you want to put a flash there, go with the lights, <laughs> it's really easier. I mean, of course, using studio lights is nicer, but use big lights, it, it helps, it helps. And um, yeah, this is actually the um, result of doing the picture, like one with, um, I think this was uh, white balance warmer color and the other one white balance more in the bluish area. And you can see like, this is how the setting actually looks like, like super like full of flowers and it's like confusing. But if you take the pictures, you kind of get like this feeling because of the framing you do. So don't be fooled. <laughs> and this is with my best friend. We also took this picture with self timer. So somewhere is the phone <laughs> down there and now i'm going to edit this picture with you guys together so uh this picture is also been taken at the same setting i was explaining right for you and this is how it looks like right out of the camera so let me change quickly to photoshop
So for editing, I'm using this Wacom one and uh, this is camera raw. And I already did some adjustments like, um, what is the feeling I want to get uh, from this picture? It's actually that Miko Yazawa is an idol. She's 15 years old. So I'm going to edit a lot out of my face. This is not normal, but cosplayers will know that they are trying to be an anime girl. They're not trying to be a real human being. So no, you normally don't edit everything out of your face. <laughs> um, because I wanted to get this really soft and girlish feeling, I'm also going to um, uh, lighten up the whole picture a bit because it has like this girlish and pinkish touch. And um, I really like to have it a bit more con uh, uh, less contrasty. So it kind of appears a bit more softer in this case. Okay, so let me check everything. This is maybe a bit too much. Um, okay, so let's open it. Oh, this zoom is in the way. Okay. It's German, but I try to. Uh, but I try to translate everything. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is the picture of the camera work. And uh, uh, what I always like to do is the first thing is to duplicate the background layer. Okay. So um, the reason I really like to uh, duplicate the layer is that uh, first you have a background layer. And if you mess something up, you still have a background layer. So sometimes I'm going to put steps together at first because uh, my laptop is has not that much um, RAM and I need to push it together. Normally you just leave it all like this, but if there is something you can just go a step back. And um, this is why I always keep the background layer there as it is. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to liquefy this picture. So going for liquefier. Okay, I can't because my RAM is full. I don't know what to do about this. Okay, maybe I have to um, do it on here right now. Okay. Normally I would do it on liquefier, but because I can't, uh, I would just use this one here. Okay, why can't I? I think I have to restart Photoshop. Okay, just give me a moment. I'm sorry about that. Let me just restart quickly Photoshop. Just restarting. Okay, Photoshop. Okay, it's opening again. That's amazing. So, okay, I'm just opening it again. In now let's hope it's working. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um I'm doing again. Let me check if I have shared. Yes, I have shared the right back. So yo, you can watch me editing. So I'm duplicating the layer again. Okay, I don't know why it's not working. Um, I will use another Photoshop, so just don't mind me. Or maybe I have an idea, just give me a minute. Mm I will use an older version of Photoshop. <laughs> Maybe this is working.
Okay, let's uh, try it with an older Photoshop and let's hope it's working. I'm sorry about that. It's also German, sorry. <laughs> All German. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the picture out of a camera in from Camera Raw and now I'm going to duplicate it again in going for liquefying. Okay, it's working. Yes, nice, 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 nice. So, um, okay. Oh, that was just too fast in my case. So maybe I realized in this picture that the eyes are slightly different. This happens. No, no one has like two perfect eyes. Uh, enemy figures help them. So this is why I'm going to try to imitate this a bit, like putting it slightly up here. And what I always like to do uh, as well is to um, edit a bit like the wick. So it gives everything a bit more volume. Um, this is an updo. So uh, I don't do that much in um, this case, but if you have like really wavy hair and a lot of long hair characters, adding volume um, just helps a lot. And normally I would also do some clean up of the wig itself, like in this case. Um, this is something I would do later on Photoshop itself. So I need like um, this, I need about 200 i think yeah adding some volume here okay try that it looks natural and not liquefied which can be a challenge <laughs> and the next thing is um these parts, like when your model is doing wrong poses, like doing this, they have like this chicken wing arm. <laughs> and um, even if your model is like super skinny, you have a habit. This is just natural and normal. So uh, yeah, edit it out. The model will be really happy about it. Um, I'm going to mask the kimono part here. Because I don't want to change this line. Going here for 200 again and just pushing this in a bit. Okay, so let me check how that looks like. Okay, that's good. Maybe also this corner here, just that it doesn't look too weird. What I always like to do as well is um, correcting parts of the cosplay itself. Like, I mean, these are like really small things and I could do it like for two hours. Uh, things like this, for example. I mean, it's 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 really not a lot, right? So just these small things, but in my opinion, this actually makes the difference. Okay, just doing like this. Uh, these are like super small things, but yeah, as someone who is doing um, the costumes by their own, so this is actually self-made, it annoys me. <laughs> there are cosplays who are like, no, it's fine, that's natural, but I'm always like, oh, but I want it to be perfect. So um, today I'm going just to show you some smaller parts, but normally the step takes up like one to two hours. <laughs> Yeah, like this. Okay. So just to show you the difference, uh, it's it's just really slightly. Of course, you can do more, but um, like this, I I already think it makes a difference how the cosplay looks like. So and because I'm a bit afraid that my laptop is crashing again, I'm just. <laughs> 
merging it with a background. Normally you don't do this, don't do it. Just leave all the layers open, but because I'm just a bit afraid I'm not going to do this today. Um, the next step I'm going to do is skin editing. And how do I do skin editing? So there is a technique, this is called, I think, um, I, I actually don't know where we're in image, but I'm going to explain it to you in a problem. You are uh, trying to separate the color and the structure of a picture. So you have just the color of the skin and the structure of the skin. And this has a lot of editing and I will now show you how it's going to work. So at first you need to duplicate um, the last layer two times. I always like to group it. And normally I will also call this group skin. <laughs> Sometimes I'm too lazy because I want to finish a picture very fast and I'm not going to do this, but it has so much to do groups and to name them because later you have like trendy all these and you're like, which was the screen one? <laughs> so um, the first layer I'm going to choose right now, I'm going to filter, blur, in a selective blur and I'm just blurring everything out of it. So let me just check if this is okay. This is gonna look like to the face. Yes. Yes, that's okay. Um, maybe a bit more blur would be okay, but in this case, I'm just going for this. So you just have a very, very, very blurry picture. <laughs> So we're just waiting for my Photoshop. <laughs> so I will just show you the difference. Normal picture, blurry. Normal picture, blurry. So um, when you try to um, do the blur, the most important thing is that you can't see the structure at all. So right now you can see my bubbles. <laughs> My, uh, my, my, my structure of my face, but this is the thing you don't want to have. I mean, you can still see some sparkles here in this um, eye area. Uh, this is the reason I was like, ah, maybe I should have blurred it some more. But in this case, it's okay because it's like glittery in my eyes. And the next layer will be, you go to filter, um, other filters and high pass. So what does high pass actually do? High pass is doing um, another layer, gray and black and white. 2.0 to 2.4 is what I personally prefer. The higher the number, the more structure you will see on the picture itself. Well, it's kind of gray, right? <laughs> because I have to put it on linear light. And wow, I have structure in my face again. <laughs> and you already can see that uh, it kind of looks already a bit softer. And uh, this uh, high pass layer is doing kind of sharpening the picture. If you watch like parts like here, it doesn't look like we are painting. So this is why we have later to erase all areas where we don't want to have the skin editing part. But this is something we are doing later because now we are going to paint a bit. So I am doing an extra layer on normal. And um, now I'm going to paint. So let me check what... I've used another brush at the other uh, Photoshop, so I kind of need to check this. I will use a normal brush for now. And uh, what I do is um, I'm going to take the color like under the eye a bit deeper here, and I just paint. And what I actually do is, maybe you can see it that uh there is still the structure right so why is this still the structure because the structure layer is over the skin layer here and here you can see what i painted have to kind of 
Oh no, I uh, used the wrong layer. Just give me a moment. Yeah. So like this. So what I'm doing right now here is also I'm sampling, um, not directly under the eyes because you want to get right of the um, eye circles. And I'm just using this. Can I have another brush here? Okay, this might work. Yeah, that's better. It was a bit too big, but I can now like go in for this case sampling again and drawing. Mm, of course, 15 year old perfect adult enemy girls don't have these lines here. So I'm also going to erase them. Same as before, I'm sampling the slightly um, lighter area of a face and just paint over the shadows. Okay. So let me check. Uh, this line is annoying me a bit here. This one here. And here just. Okay. So uh, maybe you have realized that um, I have some structures I don't really like here, for example, this area. So what I'm now doing is I'm going to the structure area, like the one with the high pass, the grayish one. And now I'm going to use um, this copy tool, take this and sample. This. And suddenly everything is gone. This is why you are separating structure from color because now it's much easier to edit out structures you don't want to have and to edit out color you don't want to have without touching the structure or the color itself. So that's why I really love and use a lot this technique. This is also a step where you can like <laughs> take this can take forever. <laughs> oh, this wasn't good. Maybe he is better. I would just do it quickly. Normally I'm giving myself more time with that. But if I would go the normal routine, you would be stuck here forever, I think. <laughs> so the good thing about this is also you can edit all the hair you don't like. <laughs> like this one. No, I don't like that. So I'm going just to take this, paint it away. Also here, this one is like, no. The best thing is, of course, that you don't have parts like this, so you don't have to edit it. But uh, that's why it's actually really nice to use this technique because it always makes uh, editing also with hair a bit easier. Okay, this might take a bit more time here, so I'm just doing it not as clean as I would do normally. So, um, okay. this is a bit too much on this side. So that's why I'm going to erase the color a bit here. 
So it's a bit more natural. So uh, I will show you the before and after. Now and after. So yeah, that makes a huge difference. Um, it won't stay like this because this is like too much of everything. But for me, it's easier to have too much from everything and to tone it down later so you can see what you're actually doing. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, apply these layers only on the face and of course the arms and shoulders. So just where you have skin. This is the reason why I grouped everything, one group, and I'm going to mask it. And this mask is pretty cool because if you paint there in black, you won't see the layer on, in this group. If you paint it in white, you can see it. So what I'm doing is right now, I am everything's black, so everything is gone. And now I'm just going into this layer using white and paint it in like this. You can see how suddenly your face is changing. Yeah, I think here you can see it. And the pimple is gone. <laughs> yeah, sadly, we are not all born with perfect skin like Amy figurines. <laughs> that would be amazing, though. So, also the neck part. Yeah, don't forget the neck. Don't forget the other skin parts. It's really important. I try to um, maintain the lines like at the hand or um, I don't paint over um, the lips because uh, it looks really weird. I can show it to you if I paint over the lips. Um, I mean, lips might be fine, but if I go like on the eyes, it's just too much. So that's why I'm not touching these parts. Because this, um, this, this uh, softening of the color, this blur, um, sometimes get very harsh and unnatural lines. Uh, same goes for the high pass. So you have to like kind of balance out where you are going to erase the layers and where not. Going back to white and painting. I could use a bigger brush, sorry. I normally used to use very small brushes so it can be more accurate. I'm, I'm normally more accurate, I, I promise, really. <laughs> okay, this was too much on this case. Okay. So. Are these my legs? Oh no, these, these are not my legs. Oh, but I forgot my hands. <laughs> I have hands down there. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh, what's the point? I have two hands. <laughs> oh, this was black. Going for white. Okay. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tone down the high pass layer, so the structure layer, uh, because that's just too much. <laughs> 
Um, normally I go about with 63. So this looks actually more natural. I will just give you a, no, don't do this. Like here, 90. Just turning this a bit down, like 50, between 50 and 60 is mostly fine. Um, same goes with the painted areas. Normally you go with about 50, but because this is an enemy girl, I'm going with about 69. So it still looks natural. So this is like for the skin editing, the first step, because I will also do some color correction in the skin. For example, the side of the nose, there's a bit too much yellow. I'm going to erase that. And also the part here is a bit too dark. I'm going to lighten up this as well. But I always like to start with a face. So <laughs> this is why I'm doing the skin editing first. Yeah, that's the difference. I mean, this is, this is actually like a lot. Um, don't do that much if you are cosplaying something who is a bit older, more mature, more natural. But uh, like for 15 year old girl, she has to be flawless because she's an idol and she's a superstar. So yeah, normally you, you just leave it like this, but I'm going to, uh, yeah, um, put it over the layer because I'm afraid of my laptop, sorry. <laughs> So the next thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm duplicating the background layer. And uh, I mentioned before that I want to have some uh, correction because this part seems to be a bit too dark. So uh, it, I mean, it's natural that it's a bit darker because there was a fan before it, but it looks like super unnatural. I'm going to have a shadow because I used the flash, but I want to give it like a bit more, um, I, I want to light it up a bit. So um, I duplicated this layer and I'm going to um, negative multiplying. This is just too much. But what I'm doing is again, I'm masking this layer, I'm erasing everything and I'm painting in white again. And I swear this step takes normally. <laughs> An hour, something like this, because I have to be very accurate with the lines. This is just too much. Yeah, as you can see that it is lighter right now. It's a bit too much because um, if you compare it to like the other parts of uh, the skin tone, um, of course it has to be a bit darker. So I think I'm going to put this on 55, 55, yeah. But you can already see the difference, like, yeah. Normally not merging it, but me doing it again. <laughs> now I'm duplicating the layer again. Mm, and I'm going to add it a bit of uh, the skin tone. So what I'm doing is I'm going here and go for selective color correction. Uh, the skin in Photoshop is uh, a combination of a uh, wet and uh, yellow. And like my personal skin tone is a bit yellowish. This is why I have to sometimes edit it out a bit yellowish. Like European people tend to have more blue in their face. So it really depends on the model you have right now. It's just that in my case, erasing out of the reddish parts of the skin, the yellow one works the best. So uh, this is just too much. And this is why we here already have a masking layer. And we are doing the same. And now I'm just applying this layer on the parts which are, in my opinion, just too yellowish. Mm. 
mostly these are the shadows. Okay. Cube as well. And I have to soften it out in this case. So I'm going to, yeah, like this. And as this is also too much, I'm going to 50 about, it depends. I think like this should be fine. So, I mean, it's not much, but for me, I can see it. So I'm duplicating layer again. And the next thing I'm now going to add it is the makeup and the eye color. So Nico Yanova has actually wet eyes, but because I had several costumes in this case, I decided to go with one contact lens so I don't have to change my contact lenses all the time. And um, I also used a pretty plain makeup because uh, I had like also other cosplays and sometimes I'm doing new makeup, sometimes I don't. So it actually depends. In this case, I didn't. So I can show you guys also how to edit the makeup here. First, I'm going to do my eye color. I'm using a new layer. She has red eyes. Yes, very natural, right? <laughs> so I'm going like this and just paint it reddish. And I like to take it as color. So the uh, layer is color. And I go to about 36, 40. Uh, it depends on the eye color. Because I don't want it to have it like too unnatural. But in this case, uh, it's a bit bluish because I had like purple uh, lenses uh, before. So this is why I'm going with a new layer. And I'm going to... Uh, use a bit more pinkish colors, like another red, red, pink, red, pink. I want red, pink. Yeah, like this. And I'm just going to draw over it. Yeah, I'll just. And then I go to soft lightning. Soft, 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 very soft lightning. There soft lining. Uh, this is also too much, so I'm turning it down like this. So uh, let's grab these two so I can show you the difference before, after. So this is a very simple way to actually change your eye color. And um, it doesn't look like super unnatural. I mean, these are red eyes, they are unnatural, but it doesn't look like too much. Of course, I have contact lenses on red, but this works actually pretty well. What I sometimes also like to do is to intensify a bit the eyes. So um, I'm going to use uh, black and paint the iris black. Just give me another brush. This one maybe like this. You have to. And I just go with soft light. I mean, the difference is, yeah, it's there. I think you can see it. Just pushing it into the group. And now I'm going for the makeup. So uh, what I always like to add it is uh, the eyebrows and the eyeliner. So sometimes the cosplayers already have amazing eyeliner and makeup and you don't need to do anything. Um, in my case, not. <laughs> so I'm going to add it. In. Sometimes I have a good makeup day and sometimes I don't have so well. Like this. Just painting the eyebrows like that. Going for soft light. And so 
softening that a bit like here. And of course, erasing. These parts as well. Yes. I turned it down again. But maybe a bit too much. Just let me check this. Okay. This one here like this. Yes. Soft light. And now I'm going for the eyeliner. It feels a bit like drawing. Okay, so and um, this is also going to be soft light. It nearly disappeared, but it's still there, right? So, uh, it's still there. I think you actually can see the difference. You can see it a bit like in the face that I had some reddish eyeshadows there. It sadly disappeared kind of. Okay, let me just sample that like this color is good. Using another layer, of course, raising the parts I don't want to have, like at the hair. Like this. Oh, this is why you use a mask <laughs> instead of a raising directly on there. And going for soft light again. Yeah, so um, this is actually the face editing. And oh my goodness, it's like uh, <laughs> not done at all because of course I also want to add the background. So uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to merge everything together in now going to the background. So what do I actually want to have? I want to have something very girlish, very nice, very soft. And so I'm going with uh, lightening up the darker areas. So normally you're going with flashes, but as you saw in the setup, there wasn't like that much space. So um, I have to do it in Photoshop. This is also a step which is normally taking a lot of time, but uh, I will just do it quickly for you guys. Um, I'm going for pink because I love pink. And my friends also love pink. I'm just going to paint these parts. It doesn't have to be like very even. And I will show you later why. Yeah, of course, if you did this step, doing the photo shooting, you don't have to do it via Photoshop later on, but well.
Okay, here I am done. Then it goes to the next part. If you have like darker parts in uh, the organza, just draw over this as well. Like at this part. Yeah, you can see some flash lines. Okay, this here. I'm going to like them up this as well. Okay. So what I normally would do now is to use a mask and to erase the parts where I don't want to have this color. Um, I will just show you quickly, but I want to show it to the whole picture because this will take too much time, but so just you get a feeling of it. Like this. I use a soft brush because um, the background is pretty blurry. So harsh lines might look very unnatural. So, and I would do this like on every decoration part of this background. It really feels like drawing and I like it. <laughs> it's also kind of, um, when you're very stressed, you can just edit a picture because it's like just so satisfying and you can take your time. So yeah, I would do this on all parts here, but uh, I will just shorten it up a bit, just the most important parts, like yeah, the cosplay itself. Yes, that should be fine for now. Normally, I would always do the whole part on the side as well. So uh, this is how it looks right now. But it's too much and too unnatural. This is why I'm going for soft light. So you can see like I brightened up the whole picture and uh, it looks much more girly and much more lighter than before. And now I'm going through the last steps of uh, picture editing. Mm. And what I would do actually is um, I have some parts in the uh, picture, I want to uh, darken a bit and some parts in the picture, I want to light them up. And I know there are different techniques and I'm a person who just likes to paint into the picture. So um, like for the darker parts, because um, I think purple should be okay. It kind of fits the whole picture. Um, let's do 21. This. And here and here. Okay, this should be fine. I'm going to soft light again. And now I'm going for lighter parts. Therefore, I want something pinkish because I really like it. And you can see, like, it immediately 
gets softer. It has like this girly and dreamish look I'm aiming for. I will keep this layer on normal because uh, it also uh, erases a bit of a contrast. If I would go to uh, soft light, the contrast will be still there and just the light is a bit softer, but I want to erase the contrast of these parts because um, like here, it's just too too dark in this case, right? And I mean, I'm fine with um, me being pretty dark and uh, pretty contrasty, but I want the background to go back a bit. So uh, it has a soft and dreamy feeling in the background, but still the model itself is sharp. Yeah, like this is just, okay, maybe going a bit down as well. And now I'm doing an overlay like here. Yeah. So what I also really like to include in this case is the so-called bouquet. And I have some brushes for this. Have some bokeh brushes. Of course, I'm going with an other layer as well. And I'm going with some other colors. So I have a contrast. It's really just very light. Here, and I think that's it. So um, this is the picture and I want to show you the before and after, but I have to save a picture for this. If it's working, yes. I will just save it here. Okay. And where is it? Oh, I can, I can do it like this, that's good. So, um, yeah, so you have the uh, picture I took and the picture I edited out of the picture I took. So you can see that there is actually quite a difference. And uh, of course I did a lot of editing for the lighting, for the face and also for the color, but I think that's the difference. Uh, and uh, this is why in my opinion, you should invest into editing because it gives the pictures the final and amazing touch. Yeah, so uh, I think I'm done with uh, <laughs> my editing and everything. Thanks so much for your patience. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Hiroko, thank you so much for the session so far. And uh, we noticed that the audience is like very heavily focus on the session and, oh. <laughs> and there were actually quite a quite a few quite a few questions so let me let me dive into some of them yeah, maybe sure. maybe an easy question to warm up a little bit okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> what what is your favorite cosplay costume oh what is the favorite cosplay i ever did so i have like two types of costumes uh, one costume is nico yazeva the picture i'm right now editing um, I really love her costumes because they're very girly and I feel very girly and comfortable. And if I run around at conventions, her outfits are really easy for conventions to uh, move around. But if it's like uh, my favorite costume I have ever done is my work cosplay um, championship final cosplay I worked on. And I kind of hate it, but I kind of love it because it's like, it's like this love hate. I have been working on this costume for seven months, uh, four to eight hours a day. Wow. And yeah, <laughs> you kind of get bored a lot and you're kind of like, when is it finally finished? But I mean, I'm super proud. I did it. I survived somehow. <laughs> and this is why this is one of my favorite costumes I've ever made. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you create all your costumes? all by yourself from scratch or do you work with board elements and um and, and how would the the split be 
Um, so, so far I have only done two weeks by myself. Normally I buy weeks and style them and um, shoes, I also buy them as well and uh, transform them with fabrics and everything. What I recently like to do is like, for example, if you have like lots of costumes, they have a lot of prints and sometimes you can't get the print you want to get. So I'm ordering the costume if 5XL, it, AliExpress, you just take the fabric or I just get a costume and change it. But mm. normally I'm doing costumes from scratch, yes. Wow. Um, as we can see here in the picture, props are also super important. Yes. Um, what are good materials and or what are good sources for props? So if you go for backgrounds, um, especially for background fabric, um, of course you can take paper, but paper, you get them in like huge worlds and if you don't have a space and the muscles to carry it because they're really heavy. Uh, I would always recommend to go with cotton backgrounds because you can iron them, you can put them away, that's actually easier. Um, I'm honest, the flowers I buy are the cheapest you can ever get. So <laughs> you, have to, you have to look at what you actually want. And of course, if you have like some eye-catching um, eye-catching decorations like um, lights or like candle lights it is maybe worth to invest into them but if you go like for flowers like smaller decorations you can go for very cheap ones what i can also tell you is don't use glass no don't use real glass because if your cosplayer has like long sleeves or tails they just swap and then it just falls down right. it can be very 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 dangerous and don't please don't use real candles <laughs> use <laughs> use led flicker candles you can't see it have a picture at all a lot of things are disappearing in the picture so even if these flowers are like super cheap ones like got on aliexpress you can't see it because it just disappears in the picture yeah. Good, good and very helpful security advice at yes. this <laughs> point. No fire, please. No, no fire, no fire in the house. <laughs> um, looking at this picture, um, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, how do you how do you plan an image with all those different elements? So uh, I think I talked a lot about how I'm planning um, the settings itself. So I will mm -hmm. concentrate more onto uh, the picture itself. So in this case, I was very lucky that I have a good friend to check the pictures of me. And I always like to go with the golden cut. Is it called golden cut? Right. It's one free, one free. Okay, golden cut. Uh, because I think uh, this makes uh, the picture looking really appealing to the eye. And for me, it's also very, dif um, very difficult sometimes to look how I'm going to frame the picture. So what we always like to do is that we take the picture and we just crop it. Of course, there is some quality, um, yeah, some quality issues sometimes. But if you have a camera who can do really good pictures, this is no problem. And um, for me, like the light planning and the picture framing, a lot is on the fly. So I have like certain poses and certain um, frames I want to get and certain things I want to have, like um, pictures through the flowers in the front. But the most of the things are like on the fly. So if you have a setting in the cosplay, you just, oh, okay, this looks good. Can we take one more? I don't like this look here, take one more. Mm, maybe a bit more right because I think this is better with our flower here. So she just goes a bit more right. So there is like not concrete planning for the mm. framing and the light, but a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Mm. Mm, and when you think of um, the editing uh, after the shot, do you have specific areas that you focus on? Um, do you do you analyze the picture and then go like, okay, this is what needs to change? Or are you basically feeling yourself into the image and, and work bit by bit? So uh, actually, um, I always do face editing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the first thing I do. And what I always do is I look if the eye color is correct. Because anime characters have so many eye colors. And then I know a lot right. of friends who can't wear contact lenses. 
And what I also do and focus on is wig editing. In this case, it's okay, but sometimes you forgot to comb your hair and it's like this, like, like you have to be sleeping there. And of course, I'm going to correct this as well. And um, sometimes when you have like very long shooting days, your makeup tends to smudge. And this is also what I'm, I'm trying to edit. And like small things, like sometimes um, the skirt is flapping up or you just see too much of certain parts and I'm just adding the, editing them out. Sometimes there's a phone in the picture and I'm just trying to edit the phone out. But like the atmosphere and um, the coloring, like the softening, this is everything I'm doing on the fly and with my feeling. For example, I edited this um, picture like three times for um, practicing purpose and they all turned out a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you mentioned it in, in the talk, but just, just as a reminder, how much time do you spend on Photoshop and editing? Oh, <laughs> roughly. Uh, this uh, is actually really different depending on what you have. Like um, if you do a lot of background editing, it can be up to three, four hours. If you just have like a portrait and, and not much with hair editing, it's like one hour. And I also have pictures. I'm just editing quickly on the phone for five minutes and just post them. So it's always really different. Right. Yeah. Um, a question popped up concerning the actual photography. Um, what are the camera settings that you're using when you take the picture? Uh, like for this picture? In, in general, or does it in vary general. from shot? Okay, so um, uh, headshots are mostly with a 50 millimeter uh, lens. I only have prom lenses because I'm a girl and I can't carry too much. And I mostly shoot with 1.8 f. And um, because I use slashes, I have mostly my um, shutter speed on 1, 200 to 250. I have high speed synchronity, so I can go higher, but this is actually fine. And for ISO, I try to stay at 100 or 150 to maximum 200, so I have a good picture quality. If I use the 35 milliliter lens, mini, millimeter, milliliter, millimeter, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not going to drink something. Um, I mostly go with 3.5 and um, I go down with ISO or sometimes with shutter speed, but um, normally I try to keep shutter speed at uh, 1, 200. So um, it, got, it doesn't get like blurry because this is what my flashes can do without high speed synchronity. I mean, more is possible, but uh, it's really bad to retraining. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I go with 1.8 f and um, 3.5 f is if I have like a 35 millimeters, it is just like if I just focus on the eye and I have like a huge area, you, the co costume tends to get blurry. And this is okay if you just do portrait shots because it's soft and it's nice and it's more focused on the face. But um, th that's actually the reason I'm going with this focal length. I hope I think it's called like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think we made some people happy with this detailed okay, information. That's so, good. Yes. <laughs> that's good. Um, what do we have else? Uh, I've got another question. Um, going back to the costumes, um, you put a lot of time and effort in them, um, but you also change them when do you move on to the next costume or uh, are you building up a repertoire? Oh, you mean this? Uh, actually, I have to confess that I'm a nerd. <laughs> so when I see a character I like or I see an outfit I like and I'm like super hyped, I'm doing this costume. So <laughs> there's like no certain um, time or no certain um, reason to start a costume. Sometimes, of course, if I have a competition, uh, I start the costume one year ago uh, before the competition happens. But uh, normally uh, I just go like, oh, this is so cute. I want to do this. And I'm just buying fabrics and start the costume. So yeah, <laughs> this is why I have so many Love Love costumes because I love Love Love. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Um, I have uh, one last question um and that is actually a question that relates to a lot of creative people and we see it in many different variations 
um, and that is um, how to overcome um, that level of shyness and how to become confident enough to get yourself out there and show yourself and, and, and present yourself in cosplay. So uh, I think I have an, a bit different story than most of the people because I started singing before doing cosplaying. So in, if you want to sing in front of people, you have no choice. You have to go on stage and sing. So um, I kind of, I kind of, um, uh, I kind of um, brought this for costume from singing. So I don't have a problem to talk in front of people or to do something in front of people because um, I started singing in front of others uh, really early. I'm still super nervous. Don't misunderstand me, I'm super nervous. I was like, oh, she's a little bored. I hope it's okay what I'm doing. So I'm, I still have this like shyness and awkwardness, but um, how should I put it? It's like, there are a lot of really, really nice people out there. They're supporting you. My friends are supporting me. And um, I kind of see when people are reacting to what I'm doing and supporting me and what I love doing. And this really helps a lot because not everyone has this. And this is why I'm very thankful about it. Uh, at the beginning, it was like, actually, <laughs> Actually, I need to tell you this story. The first time I, uh, I started a competition with my partner was, if you do this competition with me and we win some plays, I will buy you a huge penguin. Yeah, we won the competition. <laughs> Is that the penguin in the back? Oh no, it's, it's another one. It's bigger than this. <laughs> oh, this is one I got because I won the competition. <laughs> uh, so she kind of motivated me. And she also, also told me that I'm good enough because I had like the fear that I'm not good enough, that I'm dragging her down. But she said, no, no, it's okay. So I was very lucky that I had people pushing me. And... I kind of know that it's super difficult to um, to overcome it. So I don't really have a really good tip. Just uh, don't mind what people are trying to say or trying to drag you down. Try not to mind them. I know it's super, super, super difficult, uh, but do what you love and do it because you love it. And if you do it because you love it, because you have fun, you will also continue doing it and then you will naturally grow. And this is the advice I can give everyone. Don't do it just to become famous or to become, uh, become well-known in the scene or something like this. No, do it because you love it. I was singing in front of three people and I didn't mind it. It, it helped a lot, like three people, five people, and then it became 3,000 people and then 50,000 people, but it became slowly. So, so mm. I, I wasn't dragged out like, here, yes, 3,000 people, please sing. I, I think I would have run away because no. And it would also help like singing in front of friends, uh, cosplaying every friends in private spaces at first to get used to it and just having fun. And if you have fun, you don't mind what other people are telling you or or not. They, there will be people who like what you do and they will right. support you and then it will get better. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for that advice. And that that is also so true for so many other people. Um, find yourself the right community, find yes. yourself or create yourself a safe uh, environment where you can just be yourself and explore your creativity. Thank you so much for this beautiful session. Um, Thank you so much for having a, me. And for more than welcome. It was <laughs> super insightful. We learned a lot um, how you walked us through um, the photo editing and, and all the thoughts and ideas that go into creating beautiful images. Um, it was really, really cool. Really nice to see. So thank you, thank you ever so much. so much for this session. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. And I wish you a wonderful day and lots of fun at the other sessions. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> We've got one more slide because obviously we want to share your social media accounts oh, with the people. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarah Jean, I'm sure you've brought it up already. Um, please do follow uh, Shiro on Twitter and Instagram and also on a YouTube channel. As you see with the handles here, it's fairly easy, straightforward, Shiro Kujam. Um, 
if you're considering to upgrade your gear and buy a Wacom product, don't forget to claim your 20% discount on the Wacom EU and UK eStore with the discount code UP, not Japan Week. That should be Manga20. Anyways, um, our next session is in a few hours with Zelda. And we are talking about uh, it's a Cliff Studio session and manga art in traditional style. So see you later. And until then. <laughs>